Hey, are you ready for another challenge? Challenge number three, and I call this one Keyboard Mover, where you're gonna use JavaScript in order to create an element. So whenever the DOM content has loaded, then you create an element on the page. And then using event listeners for the key down and key presses, take those uh, key presses and move the element around the page, depending on if which arrow key is being pushed. So if the arrow key up, is being pushed then the player moves up along the vertical axis and then x or the left or the right along the horizontal axis and do this all using javascript and i've got some starter code for you posted here so adding the event listener for the key down function and then taking those key presses and applying the movement appropriate to the element and you can create the element into the player object using player L as the contents of the elements. So just like the example down here, and then update the style properties of the element. You can pause the video and I'll also give you a quick sneak peek at the source code that we're gonna be walking through. So pause the video here, try this out, and I'll walk you through the solution coming up. And this is all, again, note that this is all just JavaScript that's creating this. On your marks, get your editor ready, and let's do this. So first of all, let's create an object. So this object is gonna contain all of the player information. You can set some default parameters in here where we've got a value for speed and let's set speed at 100. We can have our starting value for X, also set this at 100 and starting value for Y, also set it at 100. So now when I look at player, you see that I've got all of that object information. And we're gonna use this when we create the elements. So this is all gonna be created dynamically using JavaScript. So we wanna make sure that we are ready and adding an event listener to the document, or we could add it to the window object. Let's uh, go ahead and still add it to the window object. Add event listener, and the event that we're listening for, in this case, is DOM content load. And whenever this gets, uh, whenever the DOM is ready, we're gonna invoke a function called build. Let's create that function, so build, and we've got no parameters we're passing in. So we're constructing an element for the page, and this is the element that's gonna move around. So taking the player L, so this is a new part of that player object, and then using document, create element, let's create a div, and we can update also uh, player X and player Y. We already have these set, so you don't necessarily need to have this unless you wanna have this all and maybe create the object and create this separately. So it gives you some more flexibility doing it this way. So I've added it in. So taking the L, so player L is gonna be that freshly created element and we can then set style properties to it. So we need to set its position as absolute. So this will give us the ability to move it around the screen. So now when I refresh and I go to player, you can see in player, I've got the start of that element that I'm creating. So this is that dynamic element that's being created. We don't have it on the screen yet, but we need to apply uh, some more properties to it before we add it to the screen. So updating its style, we should give it a width so that we can actually see it, of course, and a width of 100 picks. So how about 100 picks? Because we've been using 100 picks for everything. Style and height as well. So you guessed it, 100 picks for this one as well. So now we've got the uh, style properties for that element. Also, let's uh, create a background color for it so that we can actually distinguish it from the rest of the page. So again, selecting that element that we created and background color and the background color, it can be red. And if you want bonus points, you can generate a random background color because I know you know how to do that. And then player. And then lastly, we just need to position it on the page. So updating its style. So I know we've got quite a lot of style going on here and taking the player X value and just adding picks to it because it's expecting a string value here. So that's uh, the player top position. And then also we need to set its player left position and using player Y value within the object. And then lastly, let's add it to the page so that we can actually see this element. So append child and then passing in the element that we want it to append is within the player element. So let's see what happens. And there we've got our player. So this is being built whenever the document object is running. And we did have some starter code that I am gonna do a quick walkthrough. 
in order to add keyboard event listeners. And the only event listener that we're adding to the document object, adding an event listener, and the event that we're listening for is key down. So whenever the key is pressed down, then we're gonna be invoking this function. And this also can be an anonymous function, passing in the event object. And then we can get the key value that was pressed within the event object using key code. And for now, I'll console log out whatever the value of key is. So now when we refresh and I'm pressing the arrow keys, so that's up, down, left, right. And now we just need to apply conditions so that we can move the element around accordingly. So we're checked to see if key is equal to 37. And if it is, then what we want to do is take player X and subtract from it the player speed value. So it's all dynamic. So we've got the speed set there, so it's easy to adjust if the need is there. Let's account for the other keys. So we've got the four other keys. So we've got 37. And so 37, if we're clicking, that's the left key. 38 is up, 39 is right, and 40 is down. So 38 is going to be up. So we need to affect the player Y value. So that's the player Y axis. And we're subtracting on that one as well. 39 is going to be going back to the X axis. Instead of subtracting, we're adding. I think this part is fairly straightforward that we're pressing the keys. And depending on which key is pressed, we're updating the value of the player X and the player Y. And then all we need to do is reset those values of the player element because we still have it within the player object that tied to that element. So all we need to do is update the value of player left. So taking whatever is contained within player X and then adding that value. And then lastly, there's also the player top and player Y and updating those values. Let me make this bigger. And now whenever I key press, you can see my key press is down at the bottom. I'll make this smaller. So you can see the key press is in the console. So whatever key I'm pressing, you can see that it's moving the element around. So that's how you create a quick key press element mover.